In this video, I'd like to discuss this rather interesting case. A patient who had a desmus membrane detachment, a pneumatic desmetopexy was performed, but the patient redetached the next day. So in a case like this, my choice would be to inject an isoexpensile 14% of C3F8 in order to settle this detached desmus membrane. Towards the end of the video, we will teach you how to make this 14% C3F8 gas. Let's move to watching the surgery. In this case, you can see the area of corneal haze lying between the 12 and 3 o'clock position, which corresponded to the area of the DMD. Let's now see how we settle this desmus membrane detachment. Clearly, the wounds are already sutured from the previous air injection. The first thing that I do is debride the epithelium in order to enhance my visibility. For settling my desmus membrane detachments, I always create 22 gauge MVR stab incisions in the overlying corneal stroma. Now these venting incisions are already present from the previous air injection. There seems to be a slight irregularity in the pupil, so with the help of a Sinsky hook, with care and caution, I just and bring as down with the any pupil, air injection, since I'm going to have air in the anterior chamber completely filling it, I inject a little moxifloxacin prior to the air injection. We now move to the pneumatic desmetopexy. The first step is achieving the good stability of the globe. I do so by holding on to the limbus with the help of a limb's forceps. Then, I choose my point of injection. I'll always plan to inject the C3F8 in the area of clear cornea, that is, in an area completely devoid of any desmus membrane detachment. Let's now move to the injection of the C3F8 gas. A 30 gauge needle connected to a 1 ml syringe containing 14% C3F8 is passed transcornially through the cornea, dipped inwards into the anterior chamber and then the gas is injected. Once I inject the C3F8, I then retain this needle in the same position and I watch for fluid coming out through the venting incisions. I keep intermittently injecting some more gas into the anterior chamber to have a rather tight air fill. I then keep wiping out the beads of fluid that appear in the venting incisions which make me believe that the desmids is actually attaching as the fluid comes out through the venting incisions. I'd like you to look at this particular venting incision that has been marked. You will notice the bead of fluid appearing as I inject some gas. This implies that there is still fluid between the detached desmids and the overlying corneal stroma. An intermittent injection of gas allows for fluid to consistently keep coming out until the desmids is completely attached. If within a couple of minutes of the injection I still see some residual haze, I make another stab incision to aid the reattachment of the desmids. I'd like you to now notice the fluid coming out through the freshly created venting incision. These venting incisions are made after stabilizing the globe using a 23 gauge MVR and going through the entire thickness of the stroma. This works best in a chamber filled with air or gas. Note how following a few minutes of the air injection, the cornea starts to clear. The clearing of the cornea is the sign that indicates that the desmids is reattached. I'm just taking a little more time to show you that as a few more minutes pass, you will see the cornea clearing further and further more. Now, once I'm happy with this end result that I've achieved, I will leave this full chamber air in the eye for a couple of hours. In the ward thereafter, the eye will be burped with the 26 number needle at a slit lamp under a topical anesthetic. With this, we come to the end of this surgical case wherein we've performed a pneumatic desmetopexy using 14% C3F8. I think a good thing to do would be now to understand how to make the correct composition of C3F8 to perform this pneumatic desmetopexy. Let's now understand how it's done. So what we require for a pneumatic desmetopexy is 14% of C3F8. So what we need to do is connect a 1 ml syringe to the container containing C3F8 and all we need to do is draw out 0.14 ml. This is 
drawing out 0.14 ml of C3F8 and then withdrawing the plunger to make it 1 ml gives you the required concentration of 14% of C3F8. We are now ready to inject the C3F8 in the desired concentration to achieve a pneumatic desmetapexy with gas. With this I come to the end of this video tutorial. Thank you.